What is up my dudes? Welcome to another episode of Money on Track. When I first started this channel, I thought I'd include this business or money talk at the very end of every regular episode, but through trial and error, we quickly realized those episodes would be way too long. I think the very first time I had this business talk was at the end of episode two, which ended up being 36 minutes long. We started off at AGX, went to a racetrack, then followed by this business talk. And because we have a lot of new subscribers and because that clip was buried at the very end of an early episode, a lot of you guys have not seen that clip. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that footage, upload it and re-upload it onto this episode and rightfully title this episode Money on Track Episode 1. And we'll add a number to all other Money on Track episodes to make it easy for future subscribers to find it in the playlist. Uh, with that said, let's rewind to the very first business that I started at the age of 18 with just a thousand dollars out of my pocket. However, let this be a disclaimer to only take my advice with a grain of salt as at the time I was brand new to the world of business and didn't know all the rules and regulations. I had no idea selling replica merchandise was illegal. I thought as long as I disclosed that they were replicas, I'd be in the clear. So be mindful of that and only take away the concept of the business to apply it onto new products. But uh, <laughs> Mark, that is your cue. Thank you guys so much. Uh, you guys really know how to make a guy feel warm and fuzzy inside. I'm extremely grateful to every single one of you. Thank you, I cannot wait to see where we're gonna take this channel. Uh, I'm looking forward to it and I think this will be a fun journey for every single one of us. Now, with that said, what am I doing in a Volvo? Well, I'm in Florida. I had recorded this entire segment, this uh, business talk, uh, you know, mentor segment, which I still don't know what to call. Maybe comment below, let me know what we should call this thing. I think business talk is pretty cheesy, but maybe you guys will come up with a better idea. So I recorded this entire segment in my Porsche on the way to the Auto Club Speedway. However, I had purchased a external mic for the camera, but like the complete noob that I am, the rookie that I am, I forgot to turn the mic on. So I was just moving my lips with no audio. So instead of playing that video for you guys and having you guess what my muted lips are saying, I had to re-record this entire segment uh, to put into today's episode. Now, let's talk e-commerce. Well, uh, as you know, my first job was at McDonald's at 16. At 17, I had a short little stint at Macy's and at 18, I was a full-time student, so I had a part-time job at Best Buy where I was working about 20 hours a week. Now, needless to say, 20 hours a week basically means you're living paycheck to paycheck. My paychecks every two weeks were about $280, $300. So, one day, my best friend at the time took me to his cousin's new business, which was a import business. He had a 15,000 square foot warehouse and he would import shipping containers from all over the world and inside these containers were uh, decor, arts, and furniture pieces. So I'm walking around in his warehouse and this piece of art really stuck out to me uh, because the price tag of it was $4,000. Now at the time $4,000 for a piece of art was a lot of money in my eyes. I had to work seven months at Best Buy to make $4,000 so that number was just astronomical for me. Now I asked him do these things really sell for four thousand dollars he said yeah man and the best part of it is i only paid 200 bucks for it so i'm doing numbers in my head all right i got it i'm hitting the brakes relax this, this volvo with its uh ugh, safety features so anyway i'm i've always been good at math so i'm running the numbers in my head and like this light bulb just went off in my head and I decided that I'm going to start a import business. Now I started asking him more questions and he basically tells me that you can buy anything you want, anything you desire from China. All you have to do is either fly over to China to meet, meet some manufacturers or in today's day and age, all you gotta do is just Google search, manufacture in China. I think I was supposed to go that way. Uh, manufacture in China and yeah, let me go that way. Manufacture in China and uh, you know, you, you'll find something. So I decided I'm going to buy merchandise from China and sell it on eBay. So for the next two weeks, I started jotting down different ideas. I wanted a brand name, something that was commonly searched for online. Couldn't come up with anything. I thought of iPods and uh, things like that, but it was too much money for me at the time. I had nothing saved up in my bank account. Finally, one day I went shopping with my friend and this is back in 05 when uh, True Religion jeans and other designer jeans, two $300 pair of jeans, uh, had just hit the market so they were a hot ticket item everyone wanted them 
Before that, people were just buying Levi jeans, which is what I was wearing at the time, $40 jeans. So the cashier rings them up. It was $1,200 for four pairs of jeans. And I'm thinking, how, how do people afford this? And that's when it hit me. This cash register went off in my head, cha-ching! And I decided I'm going to sell True Religion jeans on eBay because everyone wants these now, but everyone wants them at a lesser price, I assumed, than uh, you know full retail. So I rush home, I do a quick little Google search, True Religion jeans from China, and sure enough, a dozen different manufacturers popped up that were selling fake replica true religion jeans counterfeit right so i go on ebay and i search for true religion jeans and the same exact pair of jeans the same replicas that these manufacturers were selling showed up on ebay and they were selling them for 70 to 90 dollars now the manufacturers were selling them between 25 and 30 dollars so right away being the shrewd entrepreneur that i thought i was i decided i'm gonna undercut the market i'm gonna sell these jeans for 60 bucks i'm gonna buy them for 30 dollars sell them for 60 i'm gonna double my money every single round so i call these manufacturers and every single one of them laugh at me because i you know i told them i want to buy a hundred dollars worth i want to start off with three of them three pairs of jeans uh quickly learned that the minimum order has to be ten thousand dollars so i start calling even more and i finally convinced one manufacturer to give me a trial run of just a thousand dollars which came out to 33 pairs of jeans at a little over thirty dollars a pair so i figured if i save all of my paychecks if i stay home and don't spend a single cent i can save up that thousand dollars in about six weeks so so i get to work i stay home i save up and after six weeks all i had was nine hundred dollars so i was a hundred dollars short i quickly ran to my dad and i pitched him my very first business plan i said dad I'm going to buy these fake jeans online for 30 bucks and I'm going to sell them for $60. I'm going to double my money every single time. I'm going to turn my $1,000 into $2,000 to 4000 8 16 32 64 128 256 512 and $1,024,000. I'm going to become a millionaire. My dad obviously laughs at me, but he appreciated my enthusiasm. So he gave me the $100 that I was short to start my very first business. So I get my $1,000, I place the order. Now, of course, this was a risk that I took because I sent $1,000 to a random stranger in China who could have just pocketed the money and walked away and I would have never heard from him again. But luckily enough, two weeks later, I get home from school and there's a shipping box in front of my house. I open it up and my eyes lit up like I was staring into a pot of gold because those jeans to me were my gateway into becoming a millionaire. So that was worth as much as a pot of gold. I took the jeans to my room, took some very nice pictures of them, made a beautiful colored ad and listed them that same night for $60, undercutting the market by 10. A week passed and I sold one pair of jeans. Yeah, uno et ye make. It, it was very disappointing to say the least. Now my dad walks into my room and he says, how's it going son, how's the business? I said, dad, Obviously, I couldn't admit to my dad that my very first business had failed. So I said, Dad, business is amazing. I'm actually getting ready to place my second order. You won't believe how much money I've made. My dad goes, really? I go, yeah, Dad. He goes, so what are the jeans still doing in the garage? Now, obviously, my bluff was foiled. I had to confess to my dad that my first business was a fail. So my dad says, let me take a look at your ad. He looks at my ad. Okay, nice ad, nice pictures. 60 bucks he says let me take a look at your competition looks at my competition same type of picture same type of ad but their price is 70 to 90 dollars he says that's your problem your price too high i said what do you mean dad what do you mean i'm priced too high well who wouldn't want to save money why wouldn't they want to buy from me when i'm selling for 10 to 30 dollars less he said son your customers are coming to you because they want 300 dollars pair of jeans but they cannot afford them. Therefore, they're forced to buy a pair of counterfeit jeans. Now, what they don't want to do is buy a pair of fake jeans that look like fake jeans because they're going to tell their friends that these are the real things, that they paid $300 for them. They're not gonna admit that they bought counterfeit jeans. That's embarrassing. So when you're priced at 60, your customers are automatically going to assume that your jeans are inferior to everyone else's because you're priced so low. Why else would you be selling at 60? So obviously they're gonna be afraid that when they buy your jeans, their friends are gonna know that their jeans are fake. They're gonna become the laughing stock in town, right? So therefore they're willing to pay an extra 10 bucks to take the safer route. So he says, price them again. Now this time it's 70 bucks. Made no sense to me. I thought people just wanna save money. But I listened to my dad, I priced them for 70 bucks. And sure enough, three days later, I was sold out. I had sold all 33 pairs of jeans. Placed another order, doubled my money. Placed another order, doubled my money. And then I started adding more inventory. I started selling seven jeans as well. And then a few rounds later, I started selling fake 
Gucci, Prada, and Fendi bags. I would buy these bags for 100 bucks and I would sell them for $400, so I would quadruple my money. A few months later, I had made my first six figures. I had cleared $100,000 at the age of 18 with my e-commerce business. I was ecstatic to say the least. But like all good things, everything must come to an end. Now I'm not sure who it was, but I have a pretty good suspicion that it was Gucci. I think Gucci filed a complaint to eBay that I'm selling counterfeit jeans and that I'm not an authorized retailer for Gucci. So therefore I cannot use the name Gucci in my ad. Standard copyright and trademark infringement. So eBay shuts my account down. And what really pissed me off was that PayPal froze my account, which I had about $15,000 in. So after a few months, my very prosperous and lucrative business was shut down. Now, although I had to close my doors after having just launched my business a few months prior, this was the greatest thing that could have happened to me because it had given me the confidence that I needed at a very young age to realize just how easy it is to make money. It had put the drive and desire in me to make even more money. So yeah, that was my first business, e-commerce. I made six figures at 18, but like the idiot that I was, I spent it all on my car, on girls. I, I remember I even went to In-N-Out one day and I bought a 100 by 100 cheeseburger just to see what it would look like. I blew through that 100,000 in a matter of months. So if there's one piece of advice, well actually if there's two pieces of advice I could give you guys is one, listen to your elders, listen to your fathers and your mothers. They actually do want the best for you. And two, well two, uh, save your money. Invest your money, don't blow it all, because had I taken that $100,000 and everything else I had made whenever I was you know, a young adult or late teenager, I would have been driving hybrid cars right now. I wouldn't be driving supercars. So save your money, reinvest, keep reinvesting, and that's how you gain true wealth. So can you guys do this? Of course you can. There are literally hundreds of thousands of people that are selling merchandise on Amazon and on eBay. All you have to do is put the screen aside, go do some research, pick an item that you can sell. Now you might not be able to double your money every round, but I'm sure you can find something you can make 25 to 75% gains on. So go do some research, start your first business it, it's so easy and it, it, like i said it, it takes no money out of your pocket i i got started with just a thousand dollars hit that subscribe button drop a nice little comment hit that like button tell your friends about this video and then go do your research i wish you guys all the luck uh it's going to be a wonderful journey enjoy the ride and uh see you guys next week ciao